This is Steve Black, and I want to welcome you to this month's masterclass on how to choose your social networks and clean up your social media profiles. In auditing a number of the group coaching members' profiles, I came across a lot of profiles that definitely have some upside, both on your, on your Facebook personal, on the business page settings, as well as Instagram, uh, YouTube, and some of the other networks. So we're going to go step by step through this. Uh, for the group coaching members, you also have access to the document that is called the Social Media Makeover Workbook, and it uh, is your homework. So when you get out of this webinar over the next 30 days, uh, I want you to go ahead and uh, identify what exactly it needs to be done and get it done before we get on our next class. So everybody turn to page two in your workbook, and we'll go ahead and get started right away. Uh, the first conversation we need to have is uh, what is Facebook and, and how does it work? So you have a personal profile where you have friends. You can have up to 5,000 friends on your personal profile. And you want your, your personal profile to be representative of what you represent, uh, but not be too businessy. So uh, some of you need to go from it just being pictures of your grandkids to being pictures of you out in the field working with clients or at least mixing it up on that level um, somewhat. Uh, your business page is exactly that. It's to promote your business. And this is not where we want to be showing pictures of our grandkids very often. It's really meant to promote your business, promote your community, and promote the interest of the people who have taken the time to like your page. On your personal profile, you, you get friends. On your business page, you get likes. Your goal with your business page is to make it look great. Uh, make sure it links over from your personal profile that people that have heard your name can find your business in an easy manner. And then to get those people that are also in your personal network to like your business page. So we're going to go over some of this today. So when we start at your personal profile, you have a cover uh, image in the background. And uh, you, could, you could upload a picture. The, uh, the bigger, the better. Uh, and you're going to want to go ahead and then crop it down so that it looks good up there. Uh, you could also uh, tap into the optimization of um, the ideal sizes. I'm not going to bore, bore you with that because they're always changing. But uh, I will, uh, most people just upload a picture, crop it in there, and make it look good. Uh, on, your, on your profile picture, on your personal profile, in my opinion, it should be a headshot. Uh, this is what follows you around on Facebook when you're liking your client's stuff, when you're, when you're uh, commenting on your prospects' posts, when you're uh, sharing the people in your sphere's content, you want to be recognized as who you are. So this should not be a picture of your family, a picture of your animal, a picture of your football helmet, or a picture of your motorcycle. I think it should be a picture of you. It should be a square picture. Um, minimum size is going to be 170 by 170, which is what it displays at. I really wouldn't upload anything there under 340 by 340 in pixels. But um, make sure it's a good picture and it's a friendly picture, and we'll, we'll just move forward from there. Um, as I said, uh, uh, size it properly. I'm not going to go over these details here, but you do want to make it look great. Uh, the, the cover, uh, you could also use a cover video um, on, on your uh, business page, not your personal profile. And if you upload a cover video, they've got to be between 20 and 90 seconds long and measure at least 820 by 312. The recommended size for these videos is 820 by 462. Um, if you're shooting a video clip, uh, that, just shoot it horizontal in the 720p mode and that will go ahead and, um, and, and, and get you enough resolution. So. Uh, uh, tips there. I'll show you some in a few minutes of people that have used cover videos on their uh, business page. But back to your personal profile, uh, you know, you want to go ahead and uh, make sure your intro section is properly filled out. And what that means is that uh, you, you're, you put yourself in whatever your title is. I'm going to use real estate as an example here. 
at your business page. Check with your MLS on that. You might have to uh, display your local office there. But let's say you were with Remax uh, Alliance up in Jacksonville. You don't want to put that you're with Remax corporate office. Or if you're with Keller Williams, you're not with Keller Williams in Austin, Texas. You're at your local office like Keller Williams uh, Winter Park. And to niche it down even further, you could put that you were employed at your business page. The psychology here is that if I'm talking to somebody, they say, hey, you got to do business with my friend. I've got to be able to find not only the, the, the person's friend, but also their business page. Um, let me give you some real time examples of this. So I'm going to go over here to Lisa Hill's page. She's a realtor. She set herself up as a broker at Lisa Hill Group. She also shows that she manages her uh, Lisa Hill Group and Greater Orlando Construction Group. So if I find her, all I have to do is click there or hover over there and I end up at her business page. So this is the proper way to set it up. Um, how you would do that, I'll come back over to my profile. I would just go ahead to my intro section and make sure that uh, I had that, some good text in here. They don't give you a lot of real estate, so you know, you know make it about you. I'm, I'm uh, a native to, to the town I live in. I've been in my industry for seven years. I'm a father of three, grandfather to six you know, a dog lover, you know, put something in there that, that people are going to really um, bond with. Then you drop down over here and this is where you can edit your employment a little uh, on your profile. There'd be a little um, pencil and then you could go ahead and um, put in your employment and how you do that. You just go ahead and you add a workplace. And to add a workplace, you would go ahead, left click there. Then you, if I worked at uh, uh, Keller Williams Realty, that's what you don't want. You don't want the big page with 149,000. I would go ahead and I put in, uh, well, let, me, let me put in Lisa Hill Group. Lisa Hill Group. And now I could go ahead and say I'm a realtor there, put in my description, when I started, save the changes. If I didn't want anybody to see it or I just wanted my friends to see it, I could go there. I could drop it down. I could hide it from certain people. And that all starts with setting up friends lists. But this is a quick uh, crash course on how do you go ahead and edit your employment. And some of you uh, have too many, um, uh, too many things showing out there. So, you know, you've listed every, every position you've ever taken. I would clean that up. Like I have these other two that I had at one time. I've, I, I, if they were checked, they would be showing up on this side. I have them unchecked so that they don't show up. Because what I want when people look at my profile is to be able to find me now and in the current. So if you have a bunch of uh, past careers listed there, or past companies, you might want to consider uh, unchecking them by going to the um, pencil and then unchecking the ones that are not current. I hope that makes sense to you. And then to go ahead and get the manages, uh, that's something that you have to do through your business page. So I'll show you how to do that. From your business page, it starts off by going here to the settings tab. I'll left click on that. I'll come down to where it says page roles and then I'll go ahead where it says page roles and I'll make sure that I assign myself into a page role. So I'll just say Steve Black and uh, actually I'm already there. So let me, uh, if I want to add, uh, we'll go back to Lisa Hill's example there. So let me just add Lisa. And then I could add her as an admin on the page, or I could add her as an editor on the page. And then she could go ahead and say that she manages that page. Now, I'm not going to set that up like that, but that you would start there by putting your name in there. Then you'd show up here as an admin on the page. And then when you're on your personal profile, you could it would, it would default to show that you also manage those pages. And if you don't want it to show up that way, you just uncheck it and then it would delete that. But again, just adding an extra piece of real estate where if people find you on a personal profile, you've been referred by somebody, all they have to do is go over here or over here and they'll be able to hyperlink to your business page. 
So that's one of the first things I would do on my personal profile. I make sure that this cover looks good. I make sure that the uh, profile picture looks good. And then uh, what I would probably be doing is I would probably be going through, uh, you know, the stuff that you're showing out there. Like this is duplicated for whatever reason. So I'm going to go ahead so it doesn't look uh, cluttered. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this one from the timeline. And so now um, when I go back, I've only got one of those uh, posts showing. If I had something that was inappropriate here, something that really doesn't match my brand, got a lot of business stuff there, uh, though I don't usually because I just recently did a big event. Usually I'm showing pictures of musicians, pictures of food, pictures of me grilling, and then mixing in a little bit of business. Show, uh, sharing a post from my business page, you know, curiosity, taking a picture of the Southern uh, Buffet, taking a, a picture of the city that I've been in, mixing it up with a little bit of business. And this is really what you should be doing on your personal profile so that you can uh, get a lot of engagement. Here I got over 50 people uh, reacting to it, 19 people commenting. That's 70 people I could have a conversation with. But if there was something up there that I didn't like, I don't have to take it off. All I have to do is change the privacy setting from public or friends to only me. Now it's there, but I don't, it isn't deleted. If I want to share it with somebody, I still can. If I want to find it in the future, I can. So what I would do if I were you is I would go through my profile. I, I do a quick scan of stuff that's out there and then stuff that was questionable in the near term just turn it to about only me and now you'd be the only one that would be able to see that. The most broad is public. In between public are uh, friends and then also uh, some very specific friends if you put your friends in the friends list, which is another thing that you should be doing on your housekeeping that we'll talk about. So this is a good example of how to clean up your profile. Um, you also need to know your URL. So what I'd like you to do on page two of the workbook is I'd like you to go up to the address bar on your desktop. I'd like you to find your URL. Mine is facebook.com forward slash Steve Black personal. And if you type that in, you'd go to my personal profile. What does yours say? You want to have that saved onto a notepad. So you would go usually control C. You'd go to a notepad and you would go ahead and save that. So now when you have to re when you have to get get back to it, you just go like this, control C, and then you could go ahead and bring it back up and end up at the page. And I want you to know that URL like this for each of your profiles. So for your Facebook business page, for your Instagram account, for your LinkedIn, for any of the networks you're on, and you want them all in one notepad. So that way if you're trying to uh, ask a client to like your page or to connect with you as friends, it's easy for them to find you. You might even consider putting something like this in your signature line or setting it up in a mobile business card where it all links in one spot. So that's uh, the crash course on cleaning up your profile, your homework. Uh, go through your profiles, identify what your URL is, ask yourself what do you need to go ahead and fix write it down, and then when you have to start pushing buttons, you'll have a step-by-step -step on what you need to fix. Another thing that you're going to want to include on your personal profile, you could customize this part with, uh, you know, key pictures that you want to have up there. Uh, favorite pictures, you could have, I think, up to nine of them. And, um, you know, just pictures that are representative and you want people to always see. So I've got those six up there. All right. So um, moving right along, um, we'll talk about once you have things set up properly on your personal, what do you do on your business? So let me take you over here to, uh, let's go back to the slides and uh, we'll move forward from there. So um, properly fill out your intro section and make sure that employment is uh, up to par. 
I'll include a, a video link in the members area so that you can see how you, you can do this or you can review this webinar. Um, on your business page, this is where you have likes instead of friends. You know, you've got to make it look great. You got to make sure that you know you have a great cover photo, your profile picture. That could be um, your, your a headshot or a logo. Um, this is where you could also do that cover video. And let me show you an example of a couple of business pages that are using cover videos. And I'm a big fan of this because it really makes your profile pop. So if we went to Lisa Hill, one of Lisa Hill's business pages, one of the first things you see is this drone video and her and her teammate listed right there on the business page. So if they're going up against another realtor, they say, did you go to my business page? I said, I don't know. You say it was the one with the video of Amway Center and, uh, you know, uh, the Performing Arts Center. They're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. We really liked what we saw in your business page. And then all of a sudden, she's in a unique uh, uh, situation against the competition. We could say, you know, obviously, I know how to market myself. I can, I can market you. Another thing that she can use to her advantage is because she's also gotten a lot of people to like her page, over 5,100 people. So that would be a good example of this. But anyways, um, things that you have to watch out for over here, you, you want to make sure these tabs are set up properly on the left. So that you can use templates when you're setting up your business page or even after it's set up, you could change the look of it because they have certain templates, what other people have done or you could custom select those. So I wanna show you how to do that. So here we are at the business page. She's got a cover video. Uh, if she wants to change that out, all she has to do is go out, ho hover over here, go to change cover, and then it would just be choose from photos, choose some videos, create a slideshow, reposition. But right, right now we wanna edit these tabs. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna go up here to where it says settings. And we're going to go over here to the general messaging page info. We're going to go right here where it says templates and tabs. And as I said, there are certain templates that you could choose to go with. Like instead of having a service template, you know, if you had a business, you could use a business. Uh, if you had a nonprofit, uh, if you had something set up for, us for politicians, I have had a couple students that were running for office. So we went ahead and set these up choosing these if you have a restaurant and what it is is it's a it's a facebook business page that's customized for that industry but we're not going to touch that right now um, we've got the default tabs off and what we have are custom tabs in here so um, if she has one here for featured listings if she wanted to turn that off all she would do is toggle it off and now it wouldn't show up on her profile anymore. If she wanted to go ahead and move featured listings up above find a home, she could also do that relatively easy or move it back just by clicking and dragging it. Um, she has one set up for services, videos. She has a page dedicated for her live videos, photos, her five-star reviews, um, other people's posts, events, what they're about in their community. Another tip for making your profile look great is when you're uploading pictures to your business page, keep the photos into photo albums. That way, when people go ahead and want to look at those photos, you can send them a single link. You're, they got, you got them over at your business page, and while they're there, they'll probably discover other victories that you've had. Another tip is, is to claim your vanity URL. They, they set it up... Um, that you know your, your business page is facebook.com and then your na name of the page and all these numbers what you want to do is you want to rename it i'm going to show you how to do that right now so let's go over here to uh to my uh, my page and all right let's let's just stay with lisa's here we'll go to lisa's page which I happen to be an admin of, which is why I can uh, log in here and uh, make edits. But if I wanted to go ahead and rename her page, I could go here to her About pay, uh, tab on the left. I'll left click that. And then that'll bring up a menu where I can go ahead and uh, make sure that all this is current and up to date. You gotta make sure that um, your app, you edit your business hours, and I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, I ran across one member's profile, 
And this said permanently closed. So they had everything set up, but people are discovering them and they're going, oh my God, they must be out of business. So you can go through, make sure all this is set up properly. That there. If she wants to rename it, this is where she would rename it. She can name her page something else. Now that's going to have to get approved by Facebook and they're real funny about this. But if she wanted to name it Lisa Hill Properties, it would probably get approved. If she wanted to name it Michelle Jones uh, Group, it probably wouldn't get approved and she would have to send a message to customer service uh, and go through the process of saying, hey, this is the reason I'm doing that. Um, you, go, you go through here, you can edit uh, a lot of these other little categories. I won't bore you with them. You could add a menu if you're a restaurant, uh, edit your public transit, uh, founding date, my, add milestones. So just a, a, a lot of stuff you could do. And here's another place you could add people as a team member here. And then you could have the, the little manage function. If you need to edit your page info and those hours, again, you want to make sure that you go here where it says always open or you go ahead and you set it up so that it's there. You don't want it to be the checkbox permanently closed or else that's what people will think you are a business that's shut down. So um, those are some really good tips on how to clean up your profile. What I'd like you to do is your homework is to go to your page and uh, start looking first at this. Make sure that you have a, a URL like uh, up top that you've already claimed your URL that you know what it is. And it should look like this. It should look like this where it's uh, facebook.com forward slash your vanity URL. And then um, make sure that you have your tabs set up properly. And then have somebody else look at it and, um, and uh, give you their opinion. And just fill out everything you can, whether it's over here on the right and uploading a picture. And then Facebook will give you these little tips that you can use. Um, so, so, you know, that, that, that will, will kind of guide you. But uh, if you have any questions on this, go into the uh, group coaching, uh, uh, our group coaching and ask questions and other people will, um, will, will jump in. One other thing that you want to set up for sure, though, is, is this button here. And so it, by default, it's nothing. And then what you do is you go ahead and you set up a button and you can edit it by using the drop down here and where people can learn more about your business, like learn more, that's a real non-confrontational one. They can watch a video by clicking. They could even call you by going ahead and setting it up over here under book now or contact you where they could call and you'd link a phone number to it if you'd like them to send an email. So um, I definitely go ahead and set that up for, uh, to go ahead. All you do is hover over it and then um, Let's see if I could add a second button here for her. get messages. No. On certain templates, you could also set it up so that there's two of those buttons there, like message me on Facebook and also send an email. So um, continue to play around with that. Well, um, I hope you got some good ideas on how to make your profile look better and where you need to start. Um, make sure you know that URL. And then go and start making a list of things that you need to go ahead and edit. And maybe it was some of the things that we covered today. So if you'll move to the next page in your, in your workbook, we're going to talk about Instagram for a few minutes and how you can make your Instagram profile look better. All right, I want to do a quick video for you on Instagram. So Instagram, the first bit of advice we would give you as you go through and you redo your profiles uh, and optimize them is to go ahead and make sure you turn your Instagram profile into a business account. So the way you're going to do that, you can go to the upper right hand corner where the three hamburgers are. You're going to swipe to the left or it may just open up. Now you're to the menu. It may look different on your phone. I'm using an iPhone. We're going to go to the bottom where it says settings. And now we're going to scroll the different options that we have. There's quite a few in here, and a lot of people have never even been inside of this part. But what we're looking for is we're looking for the area where it's going to say 
uh, sw uh, switch to a business, uh, sign up for a business profile. So I've moved that up to the top here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click on that. It's going to say sign up for a business page. We're going to go ahead and include our email and then we'll include our phone number and we click next and there may be one more option. Uh, I've already set this account up as a business account. To, so the only thing I have available at this point is to switch it back to a personal account, which I wouldn't do because there's all advantages to using a business account, no disadvantages. Anyways, uh, the one thing that you may need to be cognizant of is as you share from Instagram to Facebook, it defaults to going to your personal profile. So if you want to go ahead and um, set this up to, to go to your business account, uh, you might have to do the, the next step. And that would be click on edit profile and then scroll down to the bottom here where it says business information page and go ahead and uh, choose that radio button there next to the page that you want to uh, represent, uh, have represent you. There's one other place you might have to also go into and that we'll go ahead and swipe again. We'll go down to settings and there's another area in here where it says linked accounts. And so what you might have to do is you might have to go ahead and unlink your account, then shut the app down, come back in, and then choose your business page. But if you do that, you should be able to share from your Instagram account to your business page on Facebook by default. Um, we would not share to Twitter as it is not a good user experience. So that's the only one I would populate. But um, continuing on with editing our profile, you have to ask yourself, is your profile picture what you want to represent your brand? And that should be a headshot of you or it should be your logo. It should not be a picture of your, a group in the background or you on, you know, your motorcycle or your dog or your, a fo your fam favorite football helmet. This is what people use to identify you and, and in, in business as you're commenting, you're liking, you're viewing their stuff. If you want to stay top of mind, make yourself recognizable. Hopefully the pictures, you know, within a couple of years um, from and, and, and representative of what you look like now. Um, you could change your name. One thing that we tell people is people are probably not looking for you. So maybe include a, a SEO uh, uh, SEO optimized uh, keyword like Orlando Realtor, or, but you only get about 30 characters here, so you gotta they're really short on the characters. So be care, make sure you put in uh, uh, select wisely. Uh, your username that should be something that um, is branded across all your networks. So you can look me up on Instagram forward slash Steve Black Speaker or Facebook dot com forward slash speaker and then if you have a business account you're able to include a link to a website that could be your website that could be an idx search that could be um, your, your uh, in my case my facebook business page your bio um, this is a place where you can really you know grab a lot more real estate so what we do is we go ahead and we take the the text and then we go ahead and we edit it in our notepad because if we um, you saw the after version but the before version would look like this so whether you're doing a post or you're editing your bio they don't give you the option of including the certain characters like the return key so you come into your notepad you edit it over here then you take the the, the, the pretty product and you go ahead and uh, copy that into your bio. So I'll just take that, select all, copy. I'll go back to Instagram and I'll paste it here. And boom, it looks great. Uh, make sure your business information is, is updated. If I click here, you know, if you manage multiple business pages like I do, I'd be able to go ahead and, and switch it. I'm not going to, but I could. Um, Make sure you're in the right category. You get subcategories that you can choose as well. So I'll put, um, I'll look for a subcategory. Choose one that best uh, local business. Um, they don't give you that many options. Okay, so I'll just go ahead. I'll go uh, done. And then uh, contact options, make sure that this is populated. Uh, one thing that you also want to look at is this action button. So they link up with a number of other third-party apps like a Pointly, uh, Yelp. 
If you have a restaurant, you know, you could use open table, uh, Eventbrite if you're doing an event. And now people can just click right on Instagram and uh, have that action button there. So that's pretty cool. And then you want to make sure there's private information so that um, Instagram can communicate with you. You're going to click done. And now you see it looks really good. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove that Orlando Realtor because I don't practice real estate. I do big training. But I just want to show you how we could do that. Um, other things. Down when you're posting your pictures, you know, they say when you post your pictures, you know, always use the same filter so that it has a theme to it or don't use any filters at all. Um, I used an app here to make a collage. Uh, write this down, the preview app, the preview app in the uh, Apple store. And I, and I think it works on Android as well. There's a lot of little apps that will work to lay out your stuff. I think there's one even called layout as well, but we use preview. Um, you can see we did a checkerboard here. Those are little 15 second videos crisscrossed with pictures from my life. And um, that's just a nice little way to make your profile look aesthetically appealing. Here we are at the top. Um, if you're going to be doing this kind of stuff, you're going to have to lay out the rest of the pictures in groups of three. So like, you know, over a three or four hour period, put up three pictures. Otherwise, you're going to end up with these checkerboards not looking so checkered and the collage not looking so collaged. I'll show you what I mean. So if I went ahead and only had two pictures there, I'll archive this one. Now I have two and you see it, it messed it up. So I've got to go ahead and put something else back up there. So the way I can do that is I can either upload a picture by pressing the uh, plus sign at the bottom, or I can go up to the upper left-hand corner to my archive photos. I could go ahead and I could pull that photo out that I just took off, and then I can go ahead and choose to show it on my profile. So um, if you're looking to go ahead and clean up your profile and make your profile look better, uh, what you could do is you could go through the pictures. You don't have to delete them. You can archive them. Again, we go ahead and click on the picture in question. We go to the upper right-hand corner where the three uh, dots are, and then you click archive, and it'll be in an archived area where people can't see it on a day-to-day -day basis. So I would suggest you make this pro uh, timeline uh, look really good. Make this wall look really good, and then you know on a regular basis share things to your Instagram story, uh, which is a different webinar. Um, when we do the content strategy, but that way people will still see you, you'll stay top of mind, but when they come over here and they check you out, it looks good. Now, as you're doing your stories, another thing, if you see where these uh, circles are, those are highlighted stories. Those are stories that went up for 24 hours, but now they're up there in a portfolio forever. The first one says seminar photos. That could just as easily be, um, you know, list current listings. The next one is called tribe photos. It could be on your side, you know, just sold. The next one is quotes. That could be your tips. Uh, the next one could be, you know, that your team members. And then when people click on these, they're able to see uh, your Instagram stories from years ago, um, whatever you've choose, chosen to highlight. And then if I want to remove them from the highlight, I just go to the lower right-hand corner and then I click on those three dots and then I remove it from the highlight. But I like these being here, so I'll just leave them there for you. So that's a, a crash course on how to make your Instagram profile look better. Uh, convert it to a business account. Make sure your profile looks good. Make sure your names of your account is uh, maybe your name and what you do. And uh, separate that with the pipe or a dash. Uh, make sure your bio is complete. They only give you 150 characters to make yourself look good. Don't be afraid to use emojis. Uh, maybe use your hashtag in your bio and include a link either to your website or to your Facebook business page. And then leverage Instagram stories and the highlight features so that you make um, uh, you get people something really good to look at. You'll get a lot of followers and you'll position yourself as a great marketer. So now let's talk a little bit about LinkedIn and um, 
you know, LinkedIn may or may not be a, a network that you're using, but again, you have a vanity URL and you need to know it. Uh, to find my LinkedIn, uh, all you would do is go to linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash Steve Black Speaker. Again, my LinkedIn profile has the same vanity URL as my Instagram account, as my Facebook business. It's all Steve Black Speaker. I wish it was just Steve Black, but unfortunately my name is so common that I can't get that. So I made an early play to keep this uh, unique across the board. And my branded hashtag is also Steve Black Speaker. But, you know, making your profile look great, how do you do it? Well, there, you know, you could edit your, uh, you could edit things by just left clicking right here. And then that puts you uh, where you can go ahead and, and uh, fill these out. Here's a nice little trick in your summary. You know, include your email address early on. That way, people that are looking to connect with you can find you. If they don't have to rely on the messaging function of LinkedIn, which you probably don't check that often. Um, you can include uh, direction for them to go ahead and uh, make sure they look at you on the networks that you are more active on. And then you could also include upload various kinds of media. Here I've got a Super Bowl champion talking about me and giving me a testimonial. I've got some live videos of um, me doing sessions. So as people discover me, they can check me out here and then reach out to hire us. We have it set up so that the links are, are, are included there where people can see where you went to school. They could go ahead and uh, 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 see uh, links to your other, uh, other uh, uh, sites. And if you don't want to show it, you don't have to. You just click Save, and now they take that off of there. And then um, what else can I tell you about? Uh, you know, go, go through your profile, see if the kind of posts that you've been putting up are indicative of it. Uh, take a look at your, your work history. Just go through, you could edit your, uh, you could add a new skill, you can ask for recommendations. And I'm really glad to see that the endorsement feature is one away because that was really being abused by people. You can then um, ask somebody to do an audit on it, say, hey, how does my profile look? And with all these things, here's a really important tip, go ahead and look at it on your computer, look at it on your tablet, and also look at it on your smartphones. So um, the bottom of page three, you know, you might have other networks that you're a part of. You know, should you be on Twitter? You might want to have a presence. I've never actually gotten business from somebody that says I found you on Twitter. I do link my uh, posts on Facebook to share to Twitter, and that's a lot of my content that I put out there. I do use it as a listening tool. Uh, but it isn't one of my top networks. My top networks and my clients' top networks tend to be Facebook, personal for relationships, Facebook business, uh, so they use the Facebook ad interface, Instagram, so they can reach the younger generation, LinkedIn, so that they can get found in search engines and network with business people, and then a YouTube channel for SEO purposes. So you probably have not set up your uh, YouTube channel if you're like a lot of people. So what you would do is you go to YouTube.com, you go to this upper right-hand corner where uh, it, you're logged in, you're probably logged in through Google. I'd recommend doing this on a Chrome browser, a Google Chrome browser versus Safari or Internet Explorer. Now you left-click on um, your picture and you'll see there's an option there to set up your channel. And so you go over here. And since my channel's already set up, it gives me options to customize it. Uh, that means that you can upload pictures and you can view it as yourself or you could look, view it as somebody coming back. Um, when you set these up, you can also add uh, hyperlinks to uh, your, your, uh, your information. So if I went to settings, it's going to show uh, you know, some of the, my, my personal settings. And if I go to my about section, you know, I, 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 I just like the other ones, I hover over here, a little uh, pencil opens up, and now I can go ahead and include links to various social profiles. It's, I could overlay up to five of these on my profile so that when people are looking at it, 
um, they see those little logos here for my website, my Facebook, my uh, Instagram, my LinkedIn, and my Twitter. So um, make sure this all looks great. Make sure it looks good across three devices. Make sure you have a description set up. Uh, maybe a link and a phone number would be something that I'd recommend. And uh, get your checklist together. And uh, then get in there and set this up after you've got your Facebook looking great and after you've got your Instagram looking great. One of the other things that will really make your channel look great is if you take advantage of playlists. So as you start uploading videos, well, rather than a uploading them randomly, you can create these playlists. And then when people come to your channel, everything's categorized real nice. So um, if we were to go to my channel, and I'd encourage you to do that. Now, this is the only one that is not named Steve Black Speaker. It's named Brian Tracy Training. And that's probably something I'm going to put on my to-do list is to rename this. But if people come here... They can really quick get to all the information they need. So this could be property sold in, in um, subdivision A, property sold in subdivision B, uh, client testimonials, what we do for your our customers, uh, buyer tips, seller tips. I mean, you can name it. But I've categorized these so if people want to just go get a quick look at what's on a playlist they don't have to go through 80 videos i could just send them this one link up here and it'll link them to six or seven videos so that would be something that you might want to add to your list make sure you get your cover art right make sure that you get everything set up properly and then you go ahead and start uploading videos with descriptions and then get uh, some good playlists going all right so we've covered so much ground already in this webinar and um before we go to Q&A, uh, just kind of want to do a summary with you. If you go, uh, if you, uh, go to, uh, and another thing on your Facebook that we didn't cover was on your business page, start getting a lot of reviews. If you get like at least 10, um, they took away the five-star review situation, but it, uh, the, the, their engine uh, determines whether they're good or bad, but they don't give you a number rating until you get to like 10 reviews. And I'm not sure if that's the exact number, but 10 would be safe because that way if you've got a bunch of positive reviews and now you've got one crazy person, it's not going to knock you down. But if you only got three or four reviews and you get one crazy person that writes you a one-star review, you know, you're going to be a three-star rated person and nobody wants to do business with the three. Um, to get uh, to get um, to get reviews, uh, you got to know what that review link is. Uh, if you want to write that down and write me a five star review, I'd greatly appreciate it. You just go to facebook.com forward slash pg forward slash Steve Black Speaker forward slash reviews, and I'll try to include that in one of the um, replay links or in the uh, chat box. This is what I was talking about. If you don't set up your hours properly, uh, it could go ahead and show up as permanently closed. So um, I, I made a quick checklist of things that you can do starting on page four in the workbook, or page five if you count the cover, and it says your homework. Go through your profiles, clean up the profiles, um, gave you some tips there on Facebook, clean up your timeline, you know, get the pictures off of there that shouldn't be there, especially if you're younger. Um, organize your friends into lists. That's another training that we will be doing. But, you know, go ahead and ask yourself how you know these people and, and, and what, um, what, what lists they should be in so you can listen to them and talk to them. If you've been to the Success Summit seminar recently, there's a module in there and we also have a video. I'll include the link also to that in the members area. So if you want to put your, learn how to put your friends into friends lists, um, you know, connect up with new people by looking and seeing, you know, what, what's there. Let me show you what I mean by that. So from your personal profile, you go up here to where the, the, the friend requests are. You left click on that and go through there. There's people that you know that have probably sent you friend requests. So I'll go ahead and I'll accept uh, uh, Julie's there. And anybody that's a group coaching member, send me a friend request. That's just another way you could ask me questions or if you get stuck, you can reach out to me. If you need to text me, uh, you've got our office number and you can reach out with a text or an email. 
Uh, but do send me a friend request so that we can keep in better touch and I can help you get better results. All right. And then um, you probably have some of those waiting for yourself. If I want to go ahead and then uh, put her into a friends list, since I've already set up a friends list for the master class, I just hover over her name, I go add to another list, and then I look for the list called master class. She happens to live in Maryland, so I'll add her to the Maryland list, and that's how easy it is to put somebody into a friends list. Um, do that on an ongoing basis. If I want to go ahead and go through all my friends, I click on the friends tab here. And then I would go through them one by one, setting up those lists from the get-go. You just go add to another list. You go to the bottom, you create the list, and then you populate them. It's pretty simple. Um, declutter your newsfeed. We talked about that. Uh, going through posts that no longer want to see. You can uh, go through. Uh, you can group individuals into acquaintances. So if I wanted to take a break from uh, my friend Kieran for a while, I just put him as an acquaintance, and then Facebook would show me less of his stuff. So if somebody's really annoying, you could do it that way. Another way to do it is this way. Um, if, if, I'm an, if I log into Facebook and, and, and I'm just checking out what's going on out there in the Facebook universe, and I click on F, I end up over here at my timeline. Well, let's, I've got a bunch of sponsored stuff here. But let's say Tasty was getting on my nerves. I have them set up actually to see their stuff first. But uh, if I want to uh, get them out of there... Um, I say snooze ta tasty for 30 days, and now I don't see as much of their junk. I happen to enjoy the recipes, so I actually am seeing it first. But um, that's something. And, and you can do that with your clients also. So, you know, I'll go over here to, um, let's go to Julie, who, who, I, who we just, I just accepted her friend request. What was Julie's name? Blanton. Blanton. There you go. So if I go to Julie, right now I got her as a friend. If I want to make her close friend, I'd see more of her stuff. I'm following her by default. But if I let's say that I was working really closely with her, I can only have like 30 of these. So I can't do it for everybody. But I just go see first, and now I would see her stuff all the time. I'm telling Facebook, listen. So those buyers you're working with, those sellers, those key referral partners, all of you are working with, your key customers, connect with them as friends on Facebook and then see their stuff first. So in addition to them being in a client list that you can monitor by going up to the F here, dropping down to your friends list, going to your client list, and then having a news feed with just the people that are in the client list, you could also set it up so that you don't even have to go through that. You see the most important people stuff early on. So take control of your timeline, declutter your news feed. Um, again, if I don't want to see this, I just say snoozer. That way I don't unfollow her. And uh, done. Um, Maybe revoke permissions on some games and stuff that you've set up in the past uh, to, to do that. Uh, what we're going to want to do, let me get over my profile. I'm going to go to my timeline settings. Then I'm going to go over here to apps and websites. And then I'm going to see which ones um, have access. And if I see something shady in there, or I don't want them tracking me, I could go ahead and I could, um, like I'll take click funnels right here, I'll click that, and I'll say remove, and now they can't track me. Because they, I, gave, I might have given them permissions to see my pictures or post on my wall. So you might want to go ahead and remove some of those, okay? And then uh, unlike picture pages that you don't, uh, like anymore, you know, things change over time. So I'm going to go here to more. Oh, there it is right there. So this is how we go ahead and find out what pages we've liked. We go over here to more. We drop down to where it says likes. You left click there. You can see the pages you've liked and to unlike them, you would just go like that. So um, 
you can see I've liked a lot of the group members pages and in our Facebook group what I want you to do is I just want you to go to the Facebook uh, group how you get there you type in business success training group with Steve Black you go here and assuming that you've already submitted for your membership then you just go to this any of these posts and in a comment like this we have all sorts of these please post a link to your business you would just go to the comments and like some of these people have done you would go ahead and take your vanity URL and then you post it and then it would turn into something pretty like that all right so um, do take the time to uh, let us know what your business page is and we'll be happy to like them for you. And what I mean by like isn't just that. What I would do is go to Shelly's page. I give her a like and uh, that'd be that. All right, so covered so much. Um, unliking pages, liking pages. Connect with us, how do you do that? Well. You know, first off, send me a friend request. You go to facebook.com forward slash Steve Black Personal. Make sure you like our business page. That's Steve Black Speaker. All right. Go to the page. Give it a like. And then while you're there, go ahead, go ahead where it says following and set it up so you see our stuff first, okay? Um, You'd also want to go to our other business page, which is Business Success Training. All right. And same thing, you're going to like the page, then you're going to go to the following button and you'll put C first, okay? If you want to get notified when we post something, put on and you'll get notified. Teach your clients to do this to your pages as well. So, Instagram. How are you going to find me? You're going to go to Instagram.com forward slash Steve Black or uh, forward slash Steve Black Speaker. And you're going to follow us. And then you're going to let me know that you're following us by sending us a message from your mobile device. And then uh, we'll follow you back. How's that? Um, send us an invite to like your page uh, via one of the messenger functions. And like I said, join the, uh, <coughs> the Facebook group if you haven't. That's where all the good information is. And if we go to the Facebook group right now, um, business success training group, if you go there, and this is what it, write this down, it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash business success training. If you go there, you were just to scroll the wall, you'd see like who are some of the other members. Maybe your name's listed there. Uh, you could ask questions about that I can cover in the webinars or come back to it at a later time. Um, here's a link to, to getting more help on Facebook. It's, it's Facebook's secret training. <laughs> you can click right here and, and, and get lessons straight from the Facebook folks. You can keep up to date on the latest webinars, so make sure that you, um, here's something about Shutterstock you should check out. So go uh, another place to promote your, your, your stuff, links to other things like how to make a cover video. So just a ton of resources. Part of this whole process is get involved, be, stay involved, stay connected, make these people your referral sources. Um, your homework when you get off, to the, off the call, do this stuff. Don't just, you know, wait to the next web uh, master class. I want you to go ahead and I want you to, um, you know, do an audit of your profiles. Have your kids look at your profiles. Get some honest feedback. Um, make up your to-do list and then go at it. Clean them up. I've seen profiles with wrong employment, uh, old employment, wrong phone numbers, wrong business hours not linking to the correct pages, linking to dead pages. I mean, it runs a gamut. And then when you got everything ready, 
you know, send me the link. I'll take a look at it for you. Say, Steve, will you give me your opinion and, I'll, and, and, and send me the three or four links that you have. You have to put them there so it's easy for me to find it. Put it in a message. Send it to me on Facebook Messenger or message or uh, put it in the, in the group coaching and, and we'll look at it. Everybody will look at it together. So um, we're here to help and we're here to help you and we want you to get real growth. Uh, if you do this classes for a year or two, you're going to be one of the best people in your industry. So uh, I'm going to open this up for Q&A. Uh, enter your questions in the chat box. I'll turn them on and uh, we maybe we'll even talk, talk face to face. Let's go live. All right, so we covered so much. I actually uh, recorded that last night for everybody um, after I expressed some of the concerns that I had about some of the uh, profiles I was seeing. So uh, if you have a question, enter it into the chat box and we'll uh, go live with them. I'm going to unmute Lisa Hill. And Lisa, um, I appreciate you being such an active member, both in the Facebook group and, and, and coming out to some of the seminars. Um, I really have enjoyed watching your um, growth in social media. I remember when you first came on with me that uh, part of our conversation was that you, your, your profiles were not clean. Uh, you had sent me a friend request. I went ahead over there, looked at your profile, and I said, we've got to do something about your profile. You're a professional realtor, and people are posting cheap sunglasses and semi-clothed uh, men and women in there. So um, all she did was set it up so that any posts that came in that she, she would approve it. So she couldn't be tagged in a picture that she didn't look good or that she didn't approve of, of without, without her approval. And uh, I can easily show you guys how to do that. But Lisa, uh, how are you doing? Good, how are you, Steve? Good, good. I'm just really excited about all the members and all the good interaction we're getting from everybody. Betty, Betty Chastain, I'm gonna take a look at your uh, Facebook um, personal profile and your business page and, and give you some feedback on that. Um, Lisa, uh, in regards to going through this process about just, you know, cleaning up the profiles, you know, putting out that branded image, what advice could you give everybody that's on the call? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is to go ahead and, um, like you said, just you want it to where you have to approve everything on your page because people, I still get tagged every day in, in posts that I have no idea what the post is even about. And uh, so I would just say, you know, set, just set it up right and clean it up, get rid of, you know, um, all the junk on your page. And I, I basically, I try to just put good content out there so that people will, will keep coming to my page. Awesome. Um, what about some of the new features? Uh, I know I've seen you, you've been playing around a little bit with Instagram stories and Facebook stories. What kind of response are you getting out there from that? Actually, the stories are huge. I, um, when I do a story, uh, and it's just a little quick little video, typically in the morning when I'm driving into the office, or um, I'll get three, 400 people that'll, that'll view that story. <laughs> it's kind of wow. crazy. Wow. Yeah. That's more, that's more than I get. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, and I am trying to get more active in Instagram. So um, I posted some yesterday on Instagram and learning to hash and, and doing all of that. So I'm trying to get a little bit better at Instagram. Cool. Well, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Um, Terry, uh, Terry Theodoro, you, you said I've had no luck setting up my digital business card so at the bottom of the business card, or at least there used to be, um, I'll give you guys a number that can do it for you. His name's Chris Vaughn, and Chris is the one who set mine up for me. He set it up. He did a really great job. If anybody wants to see what it looks like, you go to steveblack.biz. So www.steveblack.biz. And the gentleman that did, uh, that did it for me, his name is Chris Vaughn from MBiz Cards. And let me see if I can pull up his number for you while we're doing the webinar. Chris Vaughn. Uh, Vaughn, uh, 336. And... Um, 
He said, another way you could do it, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, go into a website. If you just Google set up a mobile business card, they have different platforms. But at one place that Google has, I think it's called about.me. And let me see if, I, if that's correct. Yeah, get a free page, which basically you could use as a mobile business card, uh, about.me. And that's where you could also just redirect people with a, with a you know, your name.com, make it Terry Theodoro, uh, Theodoro.com, redirect it over there. And then you'd have all your social profiles in one place. So instead of having to sign five different websites that you want to link people to, you just have that one spot that people can go and connect with you. But, oh, uh, and I misspelled it. It's Steve Black. Dot is um let's see what else we have um t uh, t uh, Tara, tony had asked will this webinar be recorded this and all the webinars are always recorded and so we put that into the members area and when you go into the members area with the picture of the computer you'll see some of the past webinars you'll see a schedule for the future webinars and then you'll also see, um, when you go into the webinar, you'll see a resource section, and that's where you download um, some of the resources. And some of these webinars have really extensive downloads. Like if you go back to the Facebook and ad <laughs> webinar we did, it has a 117-page ebook there on, um, on, uh, on that. Hey, Tony, how you doing? T say doing something. Okay. Can you hear me? There you are. <laughs> Can you hear me now or no, am I muted? You're good, I can see you, I can hear you. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'm doing great, I, I love the seminar this weekend, uh, well, last week. <laughs> good, yeah, a lot, lot to take in. I'm glad you're with us so that we can help you um, grow on an ongoing basis. And the idea of this program is I'm basically starting again from ground zero today. So we have everybody um, we're talking about getting those profiles cleaned up. You know, you, I'm giving you homework. So if you have the handouts, I want you to go through and before you start pushing buttons, start asking yourself, what, what are the things that we talked about today? Do you need to apply for each of the networks? Then actually go out and do it. And then hopefully by this time next month, now you've went from your profiles being okay to be looking really great. Then we're going to talk about how to, uh, what kind of content to put, uh, how to promote that content. We're going to get into some very uh, advanced topics, you know, about how to use these story functions. Yeah, and, sounds uh, great. Messenger bots. And then in the near term, all of you have access to me to ask questions. I'd encourage you to be a part of the group. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, a go it's a learning process, and I'm, I'm at your set of eyeballs to help you. I really want you guys to get great results and be like Lisa Hill, be my, be my next success story. Um, does <laughs> Thanks. Do you have, does anybody have any questions about um, about anything that we're covering or any anything that we're not covering that you need help with? Um, yeah, Terry wants to be like Lisa Hill. Well, you're you're not you're not five ten blonde and beautiful, Terry. <laughs> I don't think I don't know what does Terry look like. I gotta look. I was thinking Terry's a guy. If you are a woman, I apologize. Oh, you're a woman. Oh, geez, I. I you're beautiful on your own right. I thought it was uh, I thought it was a guy saying that, Terry. Okay, Terry. Hey, uh, let me put Terry on here. Uh, hey, Terry, how you doing? Hi, how are you? <laughs> there you go. I'm drinking my two glasses of water a day. I hope I lose that yeah. pounds in the morning. I talk to everybody about all this great stuff and marketing, and the, the thing everybody hits me up with is I'm drinking more water. So I hope everybody's doing their 59 minutes of terrific um, you know I had, a, I had a brutal schedule last week I flew in late to Jacksonville I did a huge seminar out there uh, you know I drove to Orlando I did a realtor event there I did another event on Friday and the only thing that kept me going was honestly getting up at, at 5 30 a.m. going out to the pool swimming drinking my water meditating reading and uh, you know, I ended up having more energy by 7 a.m. than most people have all day. So I'd encourage you to do your 59 uh, minutes to terrific. Uh, who has any? Does anybody have any questions about business, sales, success, and uh, that you can enter them in, and I can answer them for you? Otherwise, we'll cut the cut the webinar short, and uh, you guys can get to work on doing your profiles. All right, Lisa. Um, 
well, let's close with this. Um, what, what's, uh, what is working for you best right now in 2018? Is it your Facebook Live strategy? Is it um, going out there and doing these stories? I love seeing your just daily presence and you're so consistent. It's been amazing. Uh, whether you're in your car and you're firing up your car and talking from your car, I always turn the volume up to hear what your day is going to be like, or it's you and Sean Barry doing the, uh, the title Thursdays, or it's you and your mortgage rep doing those mortgage Mondays. What are the things that are really working for you that you could tell the audience to focus in on? I think the, um, actually the video is huge and I, um, get you typically I will get one to two leads out of every video. Somebody will message me about something. And, um, so the videos are huge. I really like in this whole story thing now because I can see who's looking at the stories and, yeah, and, and that's kind of, they don't give me enough time because, you know, I can talk. So um, the, the video kind of cuts me off sometimes. But, um, yeah, I think it's the video and the stories. And, um, like, I, on Instagram, I'm just trying to do more of the campaigns and, you know, trying to do the polls. The polls are huge. That gets a lot of engagement. Um, so, yeah, I'm just playing around with everything. Well, you're doing a great job. I appreciate uh, – I don't know where you find time to put, put those big numbers on the board because uh, – but I guess that's the end result is by investing a little time with social media, you get um, great results. You, told, you mentioned to me that you just picked up a, a sale right off of social media. How did that go down? Yeah, it's actually good. I, um, I, I, they're coming – they're from New Jersey, and they're coming down this uh, next, next week, I guess. I'll be back from D.C., and – taking them out and looking at houses. Lisa? Yeah. Can um, you hear me? Yeah, I, I lost you for a second. You said that, uh, that they came from New Jersey and how, how did it all go down? How did they find you? Well, they, um, it was off of one of my um, videos, and she just messaged me and said, I'm looking for a house, a second home in Kissimmee that has to have a pool, blah, blah, blah. I'm coming down the last week of May. Can you show me houses? And I said, sure. So that, it's as easy as that. There you go. Uh, I think for, for most people, you know, we got to remember this is the thing that's going to keep you top of mind with your existing customer base. So add more friends, make sure your profiles are look good, make sure they link over to the business page. On the business page, continue to get people to like your page. And if you don't know what those URLs are, today's lesson shows you how to find them. Put them on a notepad. I, I can't tell you how many times I'm with business people and I'm like, hey, I'd love to like your business page. What is it? And they can't direct me to their business page. They either don't know what the URL is, the vanity URL, or they don't know what the page is officially called. And if I can't find it, I can guarantee their customers aren't finding it. Right. Um, other things, of uh, topics. Uh, Terry has a question. I need to get my videos going and get my CRM reorganized. I have 757 leads, but they lost my notes on 550. Uh, so I need to connect again and, and fine tune them for the purchase price. Good. So Terry, um, you know, at a minimum, what you want to do is, is uh, get that into a spreadsheet. If you have their first name, their last name, their cell phone, and their email address, you can also upload that into Facebook. And then once you upload it into Facebook, now for 757 leads, you can invest $10 and get your name back in front of people. And then as they like your post, as they engage, you can look them up. Also, look them up on Facebook. It took me all of about an hour to look up 150 of you yesterday on Facebook. And I was just looking you up. There's a few I wasn't able to find, but I found most people. And, you know, just, just making those connections. It's really going to play an important part moving forward. Uh, Cheryl Smith has a question. Any questions on how to brand when you work two states and, and two different brokers? Um, Let's, let's talk about that out loud. Where are you at, Cheryl? Let me see. Oh, there you are. Okay. Hey, Cheryl. Hey, Steve. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? What states are you in? Michigan and Florida? Uh, Georgia and Florida. Oh, Georgia and Florida. 
Well, um, I, I think um, you, you could go one of two ways with it. You could either go ahead and just set up one page, you know, Cheryl uh, Smith Realtor, or um, you could create, you know, two com uh, van uh, community pages, you know, like something like, um, you know, Buy in Paradise, your Florida page, and in, in your Georgia, you know, enjoy the slow life in Georgia. So, um, but I would probably go with just setting up one business page, uh, Cheryl Smith, uh, letting people know that you hold dual, dual licenses, uh, doing um, post, and then um, by boosting them, you know, you could, you could take your list of, let's say you had a thousand clients, and when you do the post, if you only want to reach people back in Georgia, you can do that. And then if you only want to reach the people in um, Florida, uh, you can do that. Let, let me show you guys what I'm talking about uploading these lists. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and then we'll, 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 we'll go live with this. I think this is really valuable. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I, I think you, I think you guys are, will will catch it. So let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. So one of the things that you could do with Facebook ads, here I am in my, make sure this is broadcasting. There you go. All right, so here I am on my personal profile. If I go up, um, if I just scroll back up to the top, and I go up here to where it says create, between where it says Steve, home, and I have that little person with the five notifications, I left click that, I drop down here to create an ad. So I'm gonna left click on create an ad, and that's gonna bring me to the ad interface. So Cheryl, what you'd want to do and, and, um, is, is I'll go ahead. Uh, first thing I always do is make sure I have my account selected. So now I'm in my ad account. And let's say that I wanted to re-engage with my database. One of the, 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 the best things I could do is I could uh, run an engagement ad. I could go right here, run an engagement ad. I could go ahead and go after page likes. So the ad is going to be optimized for people to just make one click and like my page. I'll press continue. I'd select, uh, let's say, the uh, business success training or Steve Black page. And then where I'm talking about going ahead and uploading your list, what you do is you go right here to where it says create new. You left click on that, and that gives you the option to create these custom audiences. And right up here is the option at that point to upload your customer list. So you could take those 757 names in your database, your 1,000 names in your database, and you can upload it. And now Facebook is going to go out there, find those people on Facebook, and start running your ad to them. Since they already know you, you're going to get a pretty high click-through rate. Uh, I even recommend this for people that don't know you that well. Like if you ever were one of those people that bought leads or you got a database from somewhere, you know, advertise to those people. People have to see your name five, six, seven times before they start associating you and your industry with it. But this is one of the most powerful things that you could do. And in the workbook, I don't remember what page it's on, but um, there, there is a step-by-step -step on that. And also in the members area, you could do that. But see, I've already set up a bunch of these custom audiences, whether it's people that have engaged with my events, people that have visited certain pages, and it all starts here with creating these new audiences. Uh, another uh, great audience when you're advertising is you could go in here and you could go to anybody who um, engaged with one of your videos. So Lisa Hill, she could go ahead and now create a custom audience off of people that have been watching her videos or people that have engaged with their Instagram profile. So just a ton of uh, ways, and these are advanced topics. We aren't really covering them right now, but I didn't want you guys to go blank with me when I, when I was saying how to re-engage those groups. So um, Dennis right. has a question. How do I repost a Facebook ad with a different date and open house? Well, um, both, both the open house feature and the ads have options to duplicate things. So you don't have to go through this, you know, five, 10 minute process. 
If I want to go ahead and duplicate an open house, let me go ahead and show you how I would do that. So I'm back in Facebook. I'm going to go to one of my um, business pages that we set up for, the, for this example. It's called Great Orlando Houses. And as you can see, um, there was an open house, you know, last year sometime or the year before called Sample Open House. So, or I'll go to this one that says Well-Priced Winter Park House. So I'll left click on it. Now I'm back at the one from August 19, 2018. Well, if I want to duplicate this, all I have to do is go up to the upper right hand corner and drop down to where it says duplicate event. And now it's going to go ahead and it's going to give me the option to create a new one with the photo already intact, the pricing intact. All I've got to do is switch this out to make it for 519, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m hit the create button, okay? And so now an open house has just been created for this house for, uh, based on the last one. And then uh, Facebook wants me to boost the event. So it would be real simple at this point to just go back into the ad interface and run the ad again. So I hope that answers your question. And it really is that simple. I'm going to go ahead and take this down before a lot of people start showing up at this open house. So let me uh, deactivate this. I'll go up here to edit and I'll go ahead and uh, cancel the event before people get excited about it. All right. But um, that's how easy it is to go ahead and duplicate things. So once you know you, you get your marketing right, it's really easy and I can switch out text. I don't have to copy it. Um, really easy, really fast. That took me like less than a minute and I'm talking to you guys while I'm doing it. All right, Terry. Um, Cheryl, I answered your question. Terry, any other questions out there? All right. So, um, Betty, uh, are you, Betty, are you comfortable? Hold on. Hey, Betty, how you doing? Can I hear you? Hey. Yes. There you go. You're on the, you're on the screen. Um, is it okay to go ahead and look at your page right now and let's talk about it, or you want me to do that privately with you? Uh, you know, it's up to you. It's, I, I don't have anything I think I'll be embarrassed about. I think it's just a little boring, and okay, I know so I need to a lot more. Yeah. So let's go through it so everybody can learn from it. And sure. uh, let me see if I could get to that link. Well, let's just go on Facebook. Let's start with your personal profile and I'll go ahead and, and go real time with y'all. So it's Betty Chastain, right? Yes. Like Chastain Park in Atlanta, uh, right? Uh, nope. He, there you go. Oh, there you go. He, okay. Yes. So, so let's look at this together, Betty. So the first thing I want you to change is this. All right. You're showing that you work at Watson Realty corporate office, the page with 80, yes. with 8,600 likes. So what I'm going to want you to do, make a note there. You need to go ahead and change this so that you either work at your local office. Okay. Or that you work at your, at your business page. Because if I have heard that Betty Chastain is a great realtor, I'm on the golf course, I'm down there in, in Jacksonville for the players, and they say, call my friend Betty, I get over this page and I have nowhere to go with this. You know, I could look at your about tab, but there's no phone number here. There's really no way I can reach you. Since we aren't friends, if we weren't friends, my message would go into a spam box and you would never know that I was looking for you. So this lesson today is made just for you. You know, you got to go ahead. You got to beef up your intro. Who are you and what are you about? You know, let's get a few words in there. If we were to look over here at my profile, what you'd see is I have an intro that, you know, is advising people. If you went to Lisa's uh, uh, personal profile, you'll see that. She's got it all set up here. Orlando native who's been a real estate professional in the central Florida market for 33 years. She's got it set up that she's an associate broker at her business page. 
She set her up, herself up as a team member on her business page so that people can click. If I heard that Lisa's a good realtor in Orlando, it's real easy for me to go from here over to her business page and then contact her. Does that make sense? It does, yes. Awesome. So, that, so your homework, I want to really um, take good notes on today's lesson, rewatch it, and get rolling. So let's find your business page. And what's your business page called? It is at Betty Chastain Jacks, J-A-X. Okay, let's see if we can find it. There you go. So actually, uh, when people are going to find your page, um, yes, it's she knows her, her, her vanity URL. It's, it's Betty Chastain Jacks. So that's something that you might include in your email signature. That's something that you might have printed on your business cards. And we could always get to the same spot by abbreviating this. I don't know if you guys know this. We don't have, if we're short on space for, for printing, fb.com will get you there as well. So you could write down on a business card, fb, uh, like my page, stay connected at fb.com forward slash Betty Chastain Jacks. Now, um, you have 113 people liking your page. So, um, you know, we might want to consider the migration strategy and get some of your friends to like it. Otherwise, we have to look at some strategies to grow this out from here. Um, I do like it that you have it set up so that uh, as people come here, the messenger um, pops up and asks how they could help you. I want you to work on getting people to review you. You don't have any, you don't have a rating yet. No, I'm actually very new. I just closed my first transaction today. Congratulations. Well, I'm going to like your Thank page. So now you have 132. You. Congratulations. <laughs> now. Thank you. And I just learned, I just claimed in my URL and set up my message button yesterday just because, uh, you know, because of your seminar. I would have not known how to do that. So thanks. Awesome. Well, I love what I'm seeing. So, so like one thing you could have done today at the at the at the title office is you could have asked them to um, to to write you a review on Facebook. And to do that, you need to copy this link right here that I highlighted. I'll put yeah. it in the chat box, and then um, get the uh, send that to your clients and say, uh, "Wish you the best of everything at the house." If you could take a moment just to write me a, a quick review that I was a great communicator, that you enjoyed working with me and anything else that's in your heart. And if you could go ahead and, and have them um, write you that uh, review, as soon as you go ahead and get, you know, somewhere around 10 reviews, it'll put a rating on you. And so like if we looked at Lisa's uh, page, she had, she's five star rated because she's got 19 people who have already done this, taking positive, writing positive comments about her. And this also protects you, um, Betty, when uh, that crazy tenant goes and writes you a, a negative review. But if you, if you don't start getting good reviews right now, what'll happen is that'll drop your rating really uh, far down. So I'm gonna write you a review when I get off of the webinar and just about that I think that you're a very sincere, honest, and hardworking person. So you will also have my review there. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. And my buyer, yeah, and my buyer did agree to write a review. Awesome. He said he would receive me everywhere I needed a review. So I'm going to, but now that I know to copy that link, I'll send it to him. So thank you. Yeah, you got to make it easy because not everybody knows how to use Facebook the way I do. So you got to make it easy and now you know how to get them over there. Um, a few other things I really like. Uh, I like this collage. You did a great job with that or your marketing person did. So tell them I, I like that. Um, you could consider doing a, a video if that, if that was the route that you want to go. But I think this looks great. Um, as we scroll down, um, I'm seeing... Um, I see a post from January 11th, so, uh, which is pinned. And I also see some cr more current stuff, uh, 23 hours. Is this still re relative here? Um, it is. Good, yeah. good. And you're a certified military specialist. Awesome. Um, you've got open house set up uh, as, as an event, so that's good. And... Um, what you can do to get more traction on this, you could advertise this event to people in the neighborhood. So that would be something that we could do there. Um, 
You put up another open house. Awesome. So if, if you're just putting it on your business page and not doing anything else, um, you know, your traction is going to be fairly limited because unlike Lisa Hill, who has 5,000 likes, you've only got 120 likes. So it's really important that we either boost this post or advertise it. And I did boost it, and I'm not sure if it was that one, but I did boost one or two of the open houses, mm -hmm. and I really didn't get any traction, but I think maybe I should have done it earlier in the process because I'm doing open houses for other um, other realtors in my mm -hmm. office, and I think they kind of come at me, you know, like last minute, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to together. So I think I just need to maybe start a little sooner. Mm -hmm. and maybe boost it for a week maybe I don't know what do you think well I, I think I think um, you know the great thing about about uh, about uh, boosting an open house or advertising an open house is it is um, you could scale it up real quickly so uh, on your on your interface there would be a little blue button here that says boost boost the open house what I like to do is go up here to where it says create and I go to here to create ad. Now, if I wanted to boost an open house, Betty, what I would do is I would choose engagement, and then I would drop down here to where it says event responses. So that way, whether they show up or not, they might mark themselves as interested. I would name okay. it, you know, I would name it like, you know, open house, you know, one, two, three, Main Street. And then, um, then I would get into the next screen and that's what I want to show you here. So I would go start with engagement. I would drop down to where it says event responses and then I press continue. Now you're in the meat, the potatoes uh, of the advertising interface and you could target it either by a list that you upload or by geography. What was the zip code of that last open house? Do you happen to remember? Oh uh, uh, gosh. I have it three, two, two, five. So I could type in three two two five. Now, the, three, two, right two, now five. that'll work, but um, they may stop you and say, "Hey, you have to choose a wider audience." So rather than do that, now that I know where it's at, I'm going to remove that. How much is drop the pin right there? So I'm going to just pull this over and try to drop this pin. Hold on. There you go. I'll put the pin there and then I'll make it a 15 mile radius because moving forward, that's what the HUD regulations are going to be that you have to advertise for a 15 mile radius. Right now, you might be able to get away with advertising within a one mile radius. While this gives you a more targeted audience, they found that it was a violation of HUD, HUD rules. So they're going to make it so we could only advertise within 15 miles. But the, the secret to this, Betty, is, is um, then try to use your targeting the best way you can. Maybe target people who have an interest in Zillow by typing in the word Zillow here. Okay. And um, other things that we hate. <laughs> but um, now we are only advertising it to people in this area that like Zillow, that like Redfin, and that might have an interest, let's say, I'm going to narrow the audience by putting an interest of mortgages. So I'm looking for this uh, mortgage loans. So now I've created an audience of, of a relatively narrow 56,000 people that are within a 15 mile radius of your property that have an interest in real, in, in, uh, in real estate. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, so so then you, would, you would save this audience one time, and I'll call this Betty's audience. And now you never have to do this again. You could add, run any ad from your phone, and if you want to advertise the same people. Now here's where we get into the budget. So um, what we could do, we'll do a, 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 a lifetime budget on this of a maximum of, let's say, $20. And what I'll do is I'll set this up if the open house was going to be for June, uh, for May 16th or May 19th, this Sunday, I would start those ads uh, on, on Saturday morning. 
I'd start them on Saturday morning around uh, 9, uh, 9 30 a.m. Uh, that's a Pacific time on my, on my uh, thing. So I would start it at 7 a.m. And I'd run them to, uh, till, um, I'd run them till 12 30 p.m. Pacific on Sunday. I changed that to, to just to run it on Saturday or maybe start them on Friday. So I don't think it's like the old days where we have to run it that far in advance. I think people are so spontaneous that if they start seeing this, they're going to say, honey, let's drive across town and see this open house. All right. But okay. with that being said, play with it both ways. You could easily duplicate this ad, run a second ad that looks exactly the same, and then try, it, try running it out a little bit further out. And then, um, you know, $20 is going to get you in front of quite a few people. It's, it's estimating that our daily reach with this ad is going to be as much as 1,200 people a day. Okay, that's great. And, yeah. And so um, the other things to play with in your ad when you actually go to create the ad is with the creatives. You know, you could use the picture that they have, um, I'd have to be an admin of your page there to, to do it. But um, you, could, you could use that image that they have. You could upload a video. And that's where you kind of want to just play with things and see what pulls the best. You know, editing your text, choosing a Facebook event. And once you choose the event, it populates it with something like this, like you're going to see on the screen. So if I want to advertise my open house in, uh, or not my open house, my seminar in uh, Orlando in June, all I had to do was select it and it, all, it did this and then I can change this text out by just typing it in. So it's really easy to do and I'm, I'm really happy, uh, Betty, to see that you're taking action on the, some of this stuff. Great, well thank you for taking a look at it. Um, I like the fact that you, you, know, you, you're, you're, you don't have too many tabs here, so I like that. Um, I would like to see a video tab here. So I would like you to go into your settings. Okay. And you know that, and your interface, the settings button is gonna be right up here next to your messages. You'll click there and you'll go into, um, let, me just, let me do it on Lisa's page. You're gonna go in there and you're gonna go ahead and adjust those tabs. So, Oh, it's right here. I apologize. It's up at the top. You go to settings. And then you go over on the left where it says tab templates and tabs. And just like we did in the video today, you would just add a tab. And the tab you want to add is a tab for video. Uh, actually, they have one here. Yours is just turned off. Um, or if it's not showing, you might want to change the template. The template that Lisa used is a template called services, which included that video tab. So if you get stuck there, let me know. But um, you got the gist of it. Go here, go here where it says current template, and then um, make sure that your video tab is turned on. All right. I think I can do it. I think you can too. I'm, uh, congratulations on selling your house. All right, so we're going to wind down uh, as we've uh, exceeded our 90 minute um, uh, thing. Lisa suggests that uh, you go to the house and do a short video in front of the open house. So that's another one that you could do, um, Betty. You could go out there, do a Facebook Live from the house, basically do a 10 minute tour of the house, put that in the event and then start advertising that. And that could draw them in really well as, uh, uh, at the open house. Or you could do that on Friday or Thursday. Say, hey, I'm out here at my open house. I just took this listing. It's not going to last long. Let me take you on a tour. But the more of that you have going on, the more you're going to draw people in. I'm going to do it. All right. Well, um, I think I've answered all the questions. If anybody has any other questions, go on the Facebook uh, group and ask them. Uh, this is Steve Black, and I'm going to sign off. Uh, remember, uh, do your homework. Go through your profiles. Make them look really great. If you run into snags, ask your questions in the business uh, success training group, coaching area. Uh, if um, you need more help than that, send me a personal message, and I'll try to get back to you or one of my staff members will. This is the... Uh, 
monthly masterclass group coaching with Steve Black. To learn more about it, just call our office, 770-375-5208. And if you don't do anything, start drinking more water. Do your 59 minutes of terrific. Meditate every morning. Exercise every morning and write your gratitudes. I'm grateful for you guys, and I'm going to sign off. Thank you for being with us today. Take care. This will be recorded in the members area.